Welcome to the Police Accountability Podcast. Brought to you by CopBlock.org. CopBlock is a decentralized project supported by a diverse group of individuals united by their shared goals of police accountability, education of individual rights, and the sharing of effective tactics to utilize while filming police. From sunny Phoenix, Arizona, this is your Cop Block News for the week. The Washington Post reports that a settlement has been reached over a kidnapping plot that took place in 2000. Richard Schmidt, a truck driver for Walmart, survived a kidnap and murder plot initiated by a Wyoming Highway Patrol trooper. Former trooper Franklin Ryle planned an insurance fraud scam. Ryle kidnapped Schmidt and planned to kill him to extort insurance money from Walmart. Ryle is now serving a 15-year prison sentence for his actions. Schmidt has been awarded $110,000 of taxpayer money for the attack. El Paso, Texas police officer Stephen Smith has been slightly disciplined with a reprimand for forcing a motorcyclist off the road in a traffic stop. Smith claimed he lost his cool because his new police cruiser got scuffed when he forced the man off the road. After researching the allegations, KTSM News uncovered 11 other complaints and allegations against Officer Smith, including one where the city of El Paso was forced to pay for Smith's mistakes by handing over $15,000 to a plaintiff. The Advocate reports that a police cruiser ended up submerged in a lake after two unidentified officers lost control of the vehicle at a party. The pair of Louisiana deputies were joyriding their cruiser while in attendance at a party at another deputy's home. It is not exactly known how the car ended up in the lake, but witnesses confirmed that the accused deputies were doing donuts in a field and taking turns behind the wheel. A settlement was reached in a suit alleging the police harassment and abuse led to a premature birth of a child. Michael Palmer and Amber Ballard filed the lawsuit in Mobile's federal court in 2008. They accused Crawford of repeatedly stopping and harassing Michael Palmer at work and other locations. The suit not only alleged that Officer Jason Crawford of Alabama pushed the woman around and shoved on her stomach, but also searched her in a sexual manner, including rubbing her underwear with his fingers. While the officer does not admit to any wrongdoing, the plaintiff in the case, according to AL.com, is very satisfied with the results. A woman placed in jail for failure to pay parking ticket lost her finger after a guard slammed her hand into a steel door. Annette Fulton alleges that an unknown officer pushed her through the cell door of her concrete block room. She attempted to gain her balance when she placed her hand on the door frame. Then the officer slammed the steel door on her hand. NOLA.com reviewed the police report and states that Fulton screamed in agony for 20 to 30 minutes before getting the attention of jailers. After her situation was recognized, she was delivered to a hospital for surgery. Fulton claims that the police did not use sirens during the trip and were in no hurry to get her to the hospital. Whitley County, Kentucky Sheriff Lawrence Hodge has been charged with 21 felonies. A local grand jury has charged that Hodge stole hundreds of thousands of dollars in public money during his two terms in office. Of the charges, 18 revolve around abuse of trust, and three claim the sheriff tampered with evidence. The evidence tampering charges arise from the allegations that Hodge took 12 firearms from the evidence locker and added them to his private firearm collection. The Lexington Herald leader has examined the grand jury indictment and reports that the sheriff was writing checks to himself from a slush fund used to conduct drug buying stings. This cop block report was brought to you with the help of injusticeeverywhere.com. For these and other shocking stories of cops behaving badly, visit copblock.org. This is Zoe. And this is Nick. Please stay tuned for a message from our sponsor and keep it right here on LRN.FM for more liberty oriented programming.